Just so everyone knows, I have a cold while I'm recording this. I'm sorry if I sound a bit off, just know that's why I sound a bit nasally. From Transformers Legacy United, this is the Core Class Beast Machines Cheetor, and I can almost guarantee, regardless of where you are in the world right now, you can find this guy at your local shops. It seems as though our boy has had a hard time when it comes to shelf warming. Which, I understand, Beast Machine's not exactly all that beloved. We just had Kingdom a few years ago, so a lot of people were able to get good Cheetors from the reissues, Red and Kingdom. And now we have a new Cheetor that doesn't look like a Cheetor that most people would remember. And, let's be honest, let's just say this design grows on you. As a first impression, it's, uh, a bit weird. Please, sir! Please buy me! I swear... I won't haunt your nightmares if you let me into your home. I'm not going to hate on Beast Machines. I really like the show, actually. I think it's one of the better Transformers cartoons to go and watch in one sitting. That said, yeah, the designs are a bit off. Some of them are good, like all the Vehicons I think look great. Megatron looks good in the show. Rat Trap, Black Arachnia. But then some, like Cheetor and Primal and Night Scream, are all, um... Well, they are nightmares. <laughs> uh, here on the side, you have the cheetah mode. Here on the back, there's the robot and the cheetah. And then the nice line art here. Let's uh, let's open this guy up. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of worried that by touching him, I'm going to get scurvy. Or tetanus. Why did you buy me? Don't you know? That is what I wanted. I shall eat your soul. That moment when you realize that Cheetor has the same proportions as that weird-ass gazelle from Zootopia. I'm just saying, look at them hips! Look at the hips! Oh, it looks even weirder when you try to give him short legs. Okay, make him tall again. So let's talk about the good points of this figure, right? Because there are a lot. One, very well articulated. Two, very accurate to the show for this scale. Three, I like the proportions, believe it or not. I know I'm poking fun at them, but in all honesty... That looks like a cheetah that stood up. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, cheetahs in the wild. They are gangly, gangly animals. So this all kind of works. Past that, like, let's look at that articulation I just talked about. you got a swivel at the head. You have a ball joint at the shoulder. You have a ball joint at the elbow. You have nothing in the waist but ball joints at the hips and an upper leg cut. Hinge here, hinge here, nothing in the ankles. But with all of that, you can get some really fun and weird poses with this guy. It's just, uh... He's looking at you. He knows all of our sins. Like, let's just be incredibly clear. Kind of like in the animation, the most unappealing thing about this Cheetor is the head. What's even worse is on mine, he's somewhat wall-eyed. His pupils look in different directions. But even weirder, the pupils are different shapes. On the right side of his head, he has almost like a snake eye or a cat eye. But then on the right side of his face, he has a big, normal human pupil. It doesn't help that the cheetah spots make it look like he's bleeding from his forehead or like he has liver spots. And then the green chin, even though it does help break up the head design, it also makes him look kind of, I don't know, menacing. There's something about yellow and green where it's really hard to make that a friendly color scheme. It makes you look almost villainous. It's a type of color combination that's just hard to get right if you want it to be welcoming. Yellow naturally makes people panic. Green naturally makes people want to go. Combine the two makes people anxious. And by the way, I'm not just talking out my backside. That is color psychology. And the rest of the body is also unnerving. Between his very bulky torso leaning to very thin shoulders, the big forearms, and of course the legs, he just looks incorrect. He looks like the rake, or like some type of cryptid. He looks like countless things from SCP. He looks like the type of design that would have come from an early 2000s creepypasta. It's just, he looks wrong. He looks like he shouldn't function as a organism. Uh, you know what? Perfect, perfect comparison. Please skip over this if you don't want spoilers for Alien Romulus. Okay, are we past this? Okay. He looks like the thing at the end of Alien Romulus, where it's like, it's human-shaped, kinda, but not enough. And it's making him more unnerving than if you just showed me a xenomorph. 
And seriously, those legs are not helping. The fact that they are both backwards knees, and when they're fully extended, they just look too long? It's crazy that they both look too long and too short all at the same time. But when it's all capped off with everything else with this figure, the legs are just a little extra kick to make sure that you will not be sleeping tonight. And also, I just realized he has purple spots everywhere except for right on his chest, making it look like he just has a huge patch of chest hair. Oh, God. Hey, tailgate. Hmm? Come and give me a kiss on my hot mouth. I'm feeling romantical. Hey, at least he has accessories. They're knives. He has two knives. Which, you know, with how comfortable I am around this guy, I'm really happy that he can now also stab me. That's, that's really, really, really good to know. You can try your best to get him in good action poses, and to be sure, he has good action poses. But that head is always going to make it look a little bit wrong. I just realized he has purple under his eyes. I think that's another reason why he looks so uncomfortable. He looks like he's strung out. He looks like he has not slept in days. And he is ready to do something. And you don't know what something is. Is it he wants to kiss you? Is it he wants to kill you? Is it he wants to put you in the trunk of a car? I don't know. I don't know. This Cheetor is Stranger Danger Incarnate. You know, it's really sad. He used to be such a nice kid, too. The cheetah mode looks better, I, I guess. Um, admittedly, the way that you do it, he loses most of his articulation, so now you're just down to ball joints here and hinges here. If you unhinge them, maybe you can kind of collapse things back together, get a little bit of posability back, but then it's just going to look really strange. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I just think this design that maybe is just not meant to exist in 3D. At least the cheetah head is a little bit cooler and cuter and... Wait a minute, what's that under its chin? Bah! Oh god! It's just a pervert in a cat suit! Admittedly, this toy is a lot more fun if you just pretend that Cheetor can't transform and he really is just a really sick guy with a cat suit. That's kind of funny to me. Uh, but yeah. I own this guy. If you're into really funny Transformers, this is funny. It's good for a laugh. I don't know where I'm going to put him. <laughs> this is the one Transformer where I feel like if people found out I own this, they'll judge me. And, and good, they should, because, uh... Well, I brought this thing into my house.